welcome students in this video we will try to work with the practical number 10b the practical number 10b is creating a web application to demonstrate form security and windows security with the proper authentication and authorization properties now currently the visual studio which is running up is what your visual studio 2022 in which i was doing all the practicals whichever is required but for this practical visual studio 2022 will not be useful for me so as per your requirements i am just install the visual studio 2010 and under the visual studio 2010 i will be completing this practical number 10b that is creating the web application to demonstrate form security and windows security with proper authentication and authorization property now what do you mean by authentication authentication means checking whether the user is valid or not and authorization means whether user is having the rights to access the data or not so this is called as authentication and authorization so please student for doing this practical you need to have a lower version of visual studio rest of practical i can manage it in a higher version of visual studio also but for this practical i required to work with a lower version of visual studio so i had installed the visual studio 2010 abhi jo chal raha hai wo 2022 hai but as per expectation i am here going with the visual studio 2010 so i had started the visual studio 2010 and i would like to work out with practical 10b 10 or 9 yeah 10b so what are the steps need to be followed for completing this practical i need to go to the file first create a new project so i had created the new website i am creating the asp.net mt website selecting the location where you would like to keep this particular mt website and then given a click on what the okay as well as the language selected by me over here is visual Cisha. So a new project is been created by us. It does not contain any of the pages inside this particular web application. Now this web application, I am giving a thought that this website is basically a website of a college. So I am assuming that in a college there are three sections. One is the admin section. Second is the staff section. and third is the student section so what i had done i had created three folders the first folder i had created as admin second folder i had created as staff third folder i had created for student so admin related pages will be added inside the admin page student related pages will be added under the student page staff related pages will be added under the staff page and some common pages i would like to add it outside these folders so i had added the new web form this was the earlier look and feel of the visual studio so i had added this particular default.aspx change the name of it as home so one home.aspx is been added this is what my home page is i would like to add up some kind of login pages also so i had added one login page where the user will be entering their user ids and password so added this login page you can just give a right click you can select add new item and select whatever the pages which you would like to go for adding it inside your web page and inside your website find two pages add under the admin folder i am adding one more page maybe the page name i had given as admin home under the staff folder i am adding one more web form 
and given the name of this web form as staff home under the student i am adding one more web form given the name of this web form as student home fine so now if you are looking at this folder structure you come to know we have a admin folder under that we have some pages maybe i am writing some content into it as h1 sorry h1 this is admin home page further for a staff again i mentioned over here h1 this is staff home page same way for student i had provided h1 adding contain this is student home page fine so this is the structure which is added by us under our website and our main home page is allowing you to link towards student home staff home and admin so i go to my home page further i am interested in adding few links the first link will be helping me to connect towards sorry unless the phone got ring just make it silent okay the first link will be helping me to connect to the admin so i provided a fo text as admin and under the navigate url selected admin second link i am creating for the staff home so providing the text as staff navigate url selected here staff home then i had gone to add one more hyperlink for students so text is student and navigate url add mentioned over here student now this much is quite a easier task whatever we had done we are not yet implemented any kind of authentication authorization concept i am first creating only the structure which help you to understand the authentication and authorization so run this home page this will be displaying me the main home page and when i give a click on admin it shows me the admin home page when i give a click on staff it shows me the staff home page when i give a click on student it shows me the student home page or student pages staff pages admin pages but nowhere it is asking you what you are are you a valid user or invalid user so nowhere we had authenticated for our website no authentication means what checking the identity of user and authorization means whether user is having the rights to access the data or not for example when i am going to facebook i am providing user id and password and i get logged in it means i am a authenticated user but i cannot access your photograph if suppose you had created a restriction only for your friends i cannot view your profile if you had kept the restriction only for your friends so it means maybe i am authenticated but i am not authorized every authorized person needs to be authenticated but every authenticated person is not always authorized for accessing all the resources so limited resources for it it will be what authorized not for all the resources the same concept i would like to implement in this particular page so let's focus how we can implement the authentication and authorization for implementing this user management either you create your sql server database and design the entire security system by your own okay so you can create a user table you can provide and enter the data inside the user table every user will get registered he will get rights or you can use the security feature which has been provided by the visual studio to you by the asp.net those features can be acquired by you using the concept as asp.net configuration this i am showing you as per your 
syllabus. With the current version, the system is entirely different. But many of the students in my class say, hey, sir, it is better to show me as per what is there in our syllabus. So I am showing you with Visual Studio 2010. So give a click on this option. So you will come to the ASP.NET website administration tool. And you would like to implement the security features. That's the reason you are going to the tab named as what here? Security. So you are going to the security tab and here it shows you. You can select the authentication type. Now there are two types of authentication. One is Windows authentication. It means whatever the rights are been given towards your operating system user. The same rights are been applicable for your side. That is termed as Windows authentication. Second is Forms authentication. So, Windows authentication is related to the operating system. So, we are not working with it. So, we are selecting the authentication type as from the internet. So, from the local network is your Windows authentication. And whereas, we are selecting Forms authentication, it means from the internet. So, I would like to now change my user access as from the internet and given a click on done. So, first thing what you had seen, as soon as I had changed my authentication type, it shows you, you can create a user, you can manage the user. Now, you can use the concept as role-based authentication or you can use the concept as a rule-based authentication. So, what is the difference between the role-based authentication and rule-based authentication? The concept has been quite easy as rule-based authentication and role-based authentication. What is the difference between the role-based and rule-based? When I am creating the user and for every user, I am specifying the rights for the user, then it is called as rule-based authentication. Instead of that, when I am creating a role and I am providing the privileges or rules for the role and then adding the user under the role, it means accounting role has been created or as per our current example, admin role has been created and then when I am creating the user, I will be selecting that this user is under the admin role. So, automatically, all the privileges given to the admin role they are being granted towards the user coming under the role called as admin. So, when you are having only limited user or 7 or 8 or 10 user, it is okay to use the rule-based authentication. But when we have plenty of user, it is better to create a role-based authentication. Rules are already there. The rules can be directly implemented to the user or rules can be implemented towards the role. So, better technique is what? Always first create a role, provide the rules or provide the privileges towards the role and then go for creating the user under the role. So, this is the concept which need to be followed. Now, how to create the rules? Creating the rules, we just select over here enable rules. So, now you will find there are no rules are there. As per the current scenario, I can see there are three roles are there. One is student role, one is admin role, one is the staff role. So, I am just trying to create and manage the role and creating three roles first. So, the first role created by me as admin, administrator. Second role, I am interested in creating it as a staff. Third role, I am interested in creating it as student. So, three roles are being created by me. My task is been completed for creating the roles. Now, the next task is providing the privileges or providing the rules for the roles. But we will see how to provide the rules for the roles in our next video. So, video uh, wait for the next video. In the next video, we will understand how to go for setting up the access rules for the rules.